so we're going to, we are going to talk about all the parts of the uh, respiratory system, and then we'll talk about, we'll kind of talk about the physiology of the gill, okay, and some interesting facts and all that. Part number one right here is the nasal cavity or nose. I like the short, simple name, nose. On here it says that the nose's job is to filter and warm the air. Filter and warm the air. What does the filtering? Hairs. That's right. Which grow longer as you get older, which is very annoying. And? And? Mucus. That's right. The snot in your nose is mucus. Normally it's clear. If you're healthy, it's clear. And it traps as, I'm going to change the color here in a minute, as air passes into your, through your nose. It gets past the hairs. It's mixed around up in here before traveling down there. And as it gets mixed around, any particles can be trapped by the mucus. You know this if you've ever been around a fire. Let's say uh, my dad had me burn stuff a lot. And sometimes I come in and then for about three hours afterwards, if I blew my nose, it all come out black. Yeah, you ever had that happen? Okay, if you've been around a fire, you know that a lot of the stuff, you don't even feel like you're breathing in, quote, smoke. But you inhale... Uh, things into your nose, and they get filtered. Uh, warming up the air is important. Okay? If we live, if you've ever been outside on a really cold day, you would think that, you know that as molecules get cold, they get closer together. So really cold air molecules should be really close together, and then when they hit the chest cavity, they should expand. And that would pop your little alveoli if they expanded too much because they get warmer, but in fact, on the way in, there's a lot of warming up of the air that takes place on the way down. You ever run outside on a cold day and notice that your chest hurts? Part of that is from the expansion of the, it's from the warming of the air as it gets into your lungs. Okay, because when you're running and you're breathing really hard with your mouth open, it's not getting quite so much warming as it goes down. Does that make any sense? Okay. So air passes, we use the nose as part of the respiratory system. It's kind of part of your digestive system too, as far as taste goes, okay? And we use the mouth as part of the digestive system, but it could be either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, number next. We're not gonna talk about all these exactly. This little flap here is called the epiglottis, number three. I don't know if you've gotten there in your cat yet, the epiglottis covers the opening to the lungs when you're eating, and you use it when you're coughing and sneezing. So air comes in your nose, and if the epiglottis is open, passes down into there. When you're eating, the epiglottis closes over the opening, so when you swallow, food goes down the right tube, the esophagus in the back. That's pretty much it. It's a little flap. Controlled by the muscles of your pharynx. If you swallow right now and stop halfway, you'll notice you can't breathe. Okay, you can't get air in and out of your... That was a weird noise. You can't get air in and out of your lungs. Okay, you can close your epiglottis at will if you want. You do it all the time when you cough or sneeze. If you cough, if you go to cough, you automatically contract your stomach muscles and close your epiglottis. It just happens automatically. It's a reflex, okay, and then you open your epiglottis to let air come rushing up, okay, which brings to mind the question, why is it you sometimes have liquids especially come out your nose, you've never had that happen, you've been eating or drinking with your friends at lunch, and then they say something, you start laughing, and milk comes from your throat out your nose, And I'm not sure if you knew this or not, but notice there's a space here in your back here 
in your pharynx area, which is where all the muscles of swallowing are, right back here, there's a big space in there. And so you swallow, you start swallowing your food, and it gets into this space, and you're just ready to swallow it. Somebody says something, you laugh involuntarily. Air is forced out through here, pops open the epiglottis, and you usually shut your mouth when you do this because you know what's going to happen, so you're afraid of stuff coming spewing out your mouth like vomit. So you close your mouth and it forces it. When you do that, that forces the liquid up and out your nose. And then it kind of burns if it's pop or something because it gets up in here in the sensitive nerves in your nose, up in here. And so that's what happens. Okay? You also see that because of that space back here, that's why people can like take spaghetti or something and sniff it in their nose and then pull it out their mouth. You ever seen people do that? Like stupid human tricks. Okay, where they have like a piece of spaghetti going all the way around or something like that. Kind of fun. Or string. Under four. This one right here is the trachea. Okay. Trachea also filters air and it's the main passageway to the lungs. Talk about that a minute. Let's talk about the ring structure of these. They're actually C-shaped rings. I'm going to draw them like this. It's hard to tell looking at this, but they're actually C-shaped rings. Okay. So what is it made of? You know. Cartilage. Correct. Uh, not hyaline cartilage, which is a little softer, a little thicker form of cartilage, but it's made of cartilage. Why not bone? If breathing is that important to you, why isn't this made of bone? Very good, Scott Zoko. Flexibility. Okay? Makes it more flexible. So I can breathe with my head on a side, my head down, my head back, my head over. Okay? I have the flexibility to move my head. Why are they C-shaped and don't go all the way around? Why don't the, why don't the um, rings of cartilage go all the way around that? Why are they only C-shaped? Jake. Gives it a little more room to expand. What else? Jake. Lane. I don't know what just happened there. Lane. Okay. Yes. A little more flexibility back, back and forth. What else? What's behind you? Esophagus. What has to travel down your esophagus? Food. Okay, and if those rings go all the way around, they restrict the flexibility of the esophagus, too. Okay, so with the esophagus back here, those C-shaped rings give it a little room for food to squeeze down behind there. Okay, when somebody chokes, generally, it's because the food piece was too big that they swallowed, and it pushed the esophagus in, I mean, the trachea in from behind. What I mean by that? So, food gets stuck, stuck in here, and it pushes into the trachea from behind. It's really hard to draw in this. Okay, so you have tracheal tube, and then esophagus is right behind. So, a piece of food pushes in from behind and restricts the airway. Okay, we can talk later about why you do the Heimlich maneuver, or you can do a tracheotomy. You know what that is? Yeah, you cut a hole into the trachea, down through the neck, into the trachea. Take you can do it with anything. Okay, five here are the bronchi. Bronch is Latin for branch. Those are branches to the lung. Is obviously the lungs. Okay, and really your lungs, when you look at the cat lungs, are just two sacks of tissue that are there to basically hold all this other stuff. Okay? They're like baggies with all this other stuff inside of it. All they are. Yes, sir. COPD is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, correct? 
which means that basically you can't get air in and out very well because of some sort of obstruction. And the answer to that is, in short, probably. I don't know for sure. I think it's possible to have it without being a smoker, but I'm not sure. Nine is the diaphragm. We'll talk about that. If some of you are writing this down again, even though you already have it on your diagram. Um, nine is the diaphragm. We'll talk about that in some detail next time. Eleven are the bronchioles. We have the same thing with blood vessels. You'll see the suffix I-O-L-E-S, which means really small tubes, essentially. So we have bronchioles, which are small versions of the bronchi. Smaller branches and smaller branches, and we'll take a look at animations and things like that of their respiratory system together to make this a little simpler to learn. And then you end at... What I put on here is 12 and 13, the alveoli. Alveoli are the functional parts of your lungs, and there are about 300 million of them per lung, and we're going to talk about those in some detail. Um, what's the larynx again? The voice box. That's right. Okay, and we saw this in that video of Steven Tyler, Aerosmith, singing on the little video we watched. Okay that we force air over vocal cords, thicken pieces of tissue to make sound. And then we use our lips and our tongue and our skull actually to make different kinds of sounds and words. It's the thickness and the length of the vocal cords that determine pitch. So I sing low notes because I have thicker vocal cords than somebody that sings high notes. 